ESPN's Feast Week presented by Lowe's. This is the Shriners Children's Charleston Classic. Clemson taking on Temple in quarterfinal round action. Tournament play continues through Sunday, and that's what they're playing for, the championship of the Shriners Children Charleston Classic. As we get a look at the bracket, St. Bonaventure with a hard-fought six-point win over Boise State in our first game. Marquette Ole Miss, Elon, West Virginia round out the action tonight. Hello, everybody. Derek Jones and Tim Welsh with you this afternoon. Round two of action here today, Tim. And what do you expect out of Clemson? Well, they lost the Beer Sims from a year ago. Just a, such a valuable piece of this program over the last few years. So Clemson back to the NCAA tournament last year. I think they can get back again. P.J. Hall is an ever-improving big man down low for Brad Brownell. They have a veteran backcourt, and they're always going to play that rock-solid defense. And on the Temple side, Aaron McKee. Now he has this program right where he wants it. He's got all of his players in the program, all big, strong, physical players. And Caliph Battle, you will enjoy him today because Brad Brownell says, how are we going to stop him? We're going to throw multiple defenders at him. That's a must because he's a guy that can score in multiple ways. Temple coming in with a record of 1-1. One and one. Meanwhile, Clemson with a perfect 3-0 and mark. We'll certainly talk about the Owls. It's been an up-and-down start to the season for them through the two games. Of the last game on November 13th against USC, 76-71 loss. They almost dug themselves out of a 20-point-plus hole, 23 to be exact. But Aaron McKee very positive coming into today. Meanwhile, on the side of Clemson, you mentioned P.J. Hall. They have some weapons on offense. Well, they do. When you look at their backcourt of Nick Honor and Alamir Dawes, just a veteran backcourt, and that's what you need coming in the season. You need guys that know how to run your program, that understand that understand that the buy-in is needed first and foremost with Clemson on the defensive end of the floor. That's how they've been built over the Brad Brownell years, and I don't expect anything differently this year. They've got the bigs up front, but they're going to really pressure the ball out on the perimeter. After an outstanding game one, what does game two have in store for us here in Charleston, South Carolina? It'll be Jake Forrester tipping it off against P.J. Hall. Well, not quite. <laughs> not quite yet. Forrester jumping the gun a little bit. Now we're on the road. Well, this is only the official second or third game of the year, and John Higgins with a little tease on the jump ball. <laughs> but an excellent crew today. Jerry Pollard, Antonio Petty, and then Battle. Caleb Battle gets it started right for the Temple Owls. Well, all Aaron McKee talked about yesterday to you and I were playing hard, playing hard, playing the right way, kind of like what he did during his long NBA career. Alamir Dawes outside for Nick Honor. David Collins lost the ball in his hip, out of bounds. Temple ball. Well, Temple's length could be problematic for Clemson's guards at the top, and you see right out of the gate they're playing very physical on the perimeter. Battle done. Williams, who's battling an injury. Tolbert the third, and Forrester the five for the Owls. By way of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Well, Temple played, that dug themselves a huge hole at home against a very good USC team, but then played toe-to-toe -to -toe with them on after their comeback down the stretch, just falling short. Dunn's miss, retrieved by the Tigers. Hunter Tyson in the front court. Shot clock to 15. Hanging in the air, can't score. Tyson with his shot falling off to the right side of the rim. Euro step, and the shot is in from Sage Tolbert III. Uh, Mississippi State transfer got out in transition. Great body control at the rim, but on, down on this end of the floor, Temple doing a very good job defending the pick and roll, rotating their coverage, and protecting the rim. Tolbert's coming off of a knee injury last season. 
The three, right corner, that's good. Nick Honor, he can stick it from the outside. Yeah, Nick Honor, just a solid, solid point guard. Cerebral, makes very few mistakes out there. Tremendous assist to turnover ratio. He was at one point a few years ago running point guard for the scout team for Clemson. Tolbert can't hit on the three, and the rebound out to Dawes. Be aware of Dawes. He can knock down shots. P.J. Hall. And Hall, who misses the three there at 6'10", but he can step out and shoot. I don't think Brad Brownell liked the shot selection, though, at that time for Hall. Early lead for Temple at 4'3". John working. Hanging in the air. Can't score. But the North Carolina native will go to the line for a pair of free throws. That's number one on David Collins. Well, that's what Damian Dunn does. He's a big physical guard. You see those long arms, but he likes to back you down. He just tries to get to the free throw line. Pretty much on every possession, he just really got a lot of toughness at the rim. Made the AAC all-rookie team last season as he sinks in the first. We get a look there at Temple head coach Aaron McKee, of course, former standout with the Owls. And he was coached by the late, great John Chaney. Two from Dunn, three-point lead for the Owls. Temple extending their man-to-man -man defense just to put some soft pressure on Clemson. Not letting them get comfortable in their sets. Hall back to the basket. Tyson cut off at the baseline. Shot clock to seven. To the left block. Hook shot. Hall counted. That's more like it, Brad Brownell says need you getting out there early in the shot clock shooting threes. Get down low, the soft jump hook over the top. He had a career high 22 against Wofford and Clemson's win over Wofford. Williams in the lane. He scores. Well, Temple's size at the guard spot really could be a problem for Clemson. Clemson's not that big at the 1-2 or even the 3 and they're spacing the court trying to back their guards down in the lane. Hall is knocked to the floor. And that solicits a whistle against Damian Dunn. That's number one on Dunn, and that's the first foul against the Owls. The winner of this game will take on St. Bonaventure tomorrow afternoon. Collins with the feed for Honor. And he knocks it down. Long two. Uh, he's really an improved player as well, Chase Hunter. Make a lot of plays. Balance scoring for the Owls to start. They lead it by one. Williams at the top. Works his way to the foul line and hits. Oh, very good patience by Temple early in this game. And Jeremiah Williams, not a big time scorer, more of a ball handler, distributor, but good early going to the rim. Slipping inside is Nick Honor and one. As we will make our way towards a stop. 10 9 lead early on for Temple. More first half action in a moment. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Shriners Children's, the most amazing care anywhere. Dollar General, where you save time and money every day. And Popeye's New Nuggets, they come in peace, eight peace.
Temple up 10-9 over Clemson, and the Tigers coming off of a very impressive season in one of the toughest conferences in the country. Well, certainly they're going to have to find a way to uh, replace Amir Sims. He did so much for Brad Brownell. Just you know, those scoring numbers don't jump out at you, but you know the in invaluable st little stuff. You know the leadership, the the X factor things, the defense, uh, and uh, the administration at Clemson. Give them all the credit in the world. They're they're smart enough to realize that that man right there is is a keeper. They gave him a contract extension in the off season and talk to coaches around the ACC and. He is at the top of the list when you ask coaches who who are the best X and O guys in the league. Free throw by Honor is good to finish off the three-point play. Also, Coach Brownell recently celebrating a birthday back on November 15th. He'd like a belated gift with a win here today. We're going to have to play well. Temple came to play today and... They're moving the ball well, they're sharing it, and they're playing very tough defense. Done. Hits from the top of the arc. Well, Damian Dunn is a very good-looking player. Usually he gets to, gets to the rim. That, that's not his game, so to speak, but he looks very comfortable today shooting the ball from the perimeter. Dunn is one of two Temple Owls averaging double figures this season. He's at 13 per. The answer... Again, from Nick Honor. Well, Nick Honor's fun to watch. He's so cerebral with and without the basketball. That time, using that little pin down screen off the handoff, knocking down the shot. Four straight field goals leads to a tie game here. The Tigers hot from the field at the moment. And we're going to travel called against Battle. Well, Caleb Battle just wants to score in about two seconds. And sometimes he's got to slow down and get it within the context of the offense. And well, that's a hard thing to coach sometimes because you have such a talented scorer. You don't want to slow him down, but sometimes he tries to make his moves too quickly when the defense is already set. Honor, who's bringing it down, has 11 of the 13 points for Clemson. Gets a feed from Dawes. Hits again! Well, that time, though, that was a defensive mistake. Ty Strickland was just stood, just stood there and watched honor shoot one right in his face from the same exact spot he just made one honor is on fire long two is good as ty strickland in the mix cuts it to a one-point game well, good shot by strickland there good balance you gotta understand he's got a tough assignment he's got to stay with honor honor just keeps moving without the basketball chase hunter in pj hall with the handoff to honor honor Oh. He wanted to find some space there to shoot. Shot clock to six in the hall. Hall strong to the rack. Uh, good recognition by Honor, but even better post, post up down low. Just carved out some space down low. Hall moving without the basketball is a good feel for the game on how to get open. Pass in the lane intended for Dunn. Almost intercepted. Battle gets a screen. Cuts through the defense. Nearly has it stolen by Honor. Strickland. Long miss. Nearly grabbed by the Owls. Still loose. Hall tried to save it. Strickland all the way in, and he gets fouled. Well, this is why Brad Brownell feels good about this season. When you have a point guard that knows how to run the team but also can knock down shots and you saw Strickland there. He kind of froze and looked at Honor. But then look at the great little post up, the perfect pass right where Hall could catch it and just lay it in. Strickland third on the team in scoring, just under 10 points per game as the first free throw rattle out. His father, NBA veteran, Rod Strickland, who had a very distinguished career in the NBA. Also was a first-team All-American in college at DePaul. Eighteen, sixteen, the score. Soft zone press, no traps. Just making Clemson take some time off the clock. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Clemson. Help. 
Zach Hicks out of Camden, New Jersey, into the game for Temple. Nick Jordan in as well. Honor falls to the floor. And this will lead to a whistle against Strickland. This is what makes Nick Honor so tough to defend. Not unlike the St. Bonaventure guards, he's constantly moving and Brad Brownell puts him in good spots, not only with the ball, but without the ball. He's, he runs through the baseline, he'll cut opposite, and then he'll come back up to the top and catches the ball on the run off a high screen or a handoff. Nas Bohannon, left-handed hook is in. Yeah, that's a good move by Bohannon, but Temple's got to close that door. When a big guy takes three dribbles in the paint, the defense has to shrink and cut off his angle to the rim. Lead of four for Clemson. Jaleel White finds Strickland. There's a shot clock approaching 10 seconds left to shoot. Strickland with a crossover to the right side of the lane. Banked it in. Wow. Reminds me of another guy named Strickland. A little bounce in his step with a nice soft touch off the window. Cuts it to a two-point game. Seven straight field goals for Clemson to lead it by two. Dawes out to Bohannon, gets it right back. Into the lane, tipped and stolen. And then White is knocked to the floor, or nearly knocked to the floor. And that will take us into a timeout. 20 to 18, back and forth play, Clemson up. Well, with Amir Sims gone from Clemson, who's going to take over and be that leader for Brad Brownell? Well, early and often, it has been Nick Honor. Just unstoppable, 14 points early out of their first 20, doing it in an array of different ways, with the ball, without the ball, constantly moving. Clemson starting to get into a big rhythm, and you better get near that guy because he is feeling it this afternoon in Charleston. See there the impact he's had 14 of the 20 points for the Clemson Tigers. Tim, when somebody starts out like this, if you're the opposing head coach, how much do you alter your defensive game plan or do you just try to stay the course? No, you've got to make in game adjustments. You have to make him feel uncomfortable because whatever he's done, he scored in a lot of different ways. So, what, what you're doing is not working. So, either you switch up your defenses, you switch out on him, you double him a little bit. And definitely pay attention to him when he's out on the perimeter and get close to him when he goes into a shot. Hicks with a swing to White. White spinning. Tough contest there. Leads to a miss and a Clemson possession. It's not a good look by White. Just kind of a forced effort at the rim. Hunter gets blocked on the other end. And that pass intended for White, wide from Strickland. Baseline to Bohannon. Bohannon double clutches a little bit, and that allowed Temple to get back defensively to make the block. And Jordan did a good job of rim running defensively and presenting himself at the rim. Strickland out to catch. Jordan. Hits the front of the iron, and a foul, loose ball foul, will be charged here to Temple. Jordan looks like a guy that might be able to shoot in the gym by himself, but I don't know if Aaron McKee wants him taking contested shots early in the shot clock, clock at the top of the key, and he's going to get a seat next to their staff, and they're going to explain it to him. It's number one on White. Number four on the Owls. They break the pressure. Dawes. Inside cut. Inside cut. Move back near the midcourt line, and that pass is intercepted by Temple. Strickland has his shot blocked at the rim. Back and forth play on both sides. Into the corner. Three ball up. That's no good. Alex Hemingway on that previous possession, that ball went one way, and he wasn't even looking at it. Well, that's on Alamir Dawes. Though he's got to take better control of the basketball. That was the issue a season ago for Clemson, and they need to make sure he improves his ability, his decision making, especially with his turnovers. 
The spin by Dunn, falling to the floor, no call. Lots of contact, no whistle. Dunn, over to Strickland, one to shoot. Misses the three, the long miss to Dawes. Two on three. Clemson hasn't scored here now in about three minutes. Hemingway for three, that's good. Great job by Hemingway, just reading that screen. Perfect timing at the top. He got that quick release. A pure shooter. He can fill it up when he gets the opportunity. It's a five-point lead, largest of the game for Clemson. Dunn gets the handoff. Sticky defense being played by the Tigers. Shot clock to four. Strickland, tough three, got it. Ty Strickland, wow. Ty Strickland is came to play today with Dad in the crowd, making him proud. Cuts the deficit to two at 23-21. Hunter swings a pass left. It's stolen by Strickland. Three on two. Strickland kicks it out to Hicks. Back over to Strickland for three. Connects. Three more for Ty Strickland. That all started by just a loose, careless cross-court pass by Clemson. And Clemson's kind of lost their way since Nick Honor went out of the game. And he's coming back in. A Ty Strickland-aided 6-0 run for Temple. Foul. Ushers in to break. Strickland huge here. Ty Strickland has that ability to score. He's very athletic at the rim, but starting to fill it up from downtown. He's got Temple back on top. These teams, no strangers at meeting each other in Charleston as a part of the Charleston Classic. Going back to 2017, they met in the Charleston Classic Championship game. And Temple was able to grab the 67-60 win over Clemson. Josh Brown with 13 points, and the Owls with a seven-point victory. Temple led at the time by the Hall of Fame coach, Fran Dunphy. He's in my Hall of Fame. I don't know which Hall of Fame he's in. He's in the Philly Hall of Fame, and I know that. He should be in all of them, in my opinion. What a tremendous coach. When you talk about Big Five basketball in Philadelphia, Fran Dumphy, a huge part of that. That's Nick Honor back in. Hall will launch. Connects. E.J. Hall. You mentioned earlier he can fill it up from deep, and he gives Clemson the lead back at two. Well, he took a contested three early earlier but that was within the context of their offense and that's a play they run for him because they know he can make that shot and bring the big out on the perimeter battle he can't hit the rebound grab by Forrester done misses the three the rebound taken by the Tigers Collins baseline drive the feed outside to Hemingway And a foul as Hall gets the basketball. Well, here's what they do with P.J. Hall. A little pick and pop. They slide over. They do not rotate out. And he just gets his feet set. And if they're going to double the ball screen with Hall out on the perimeter, they have to have a third defender rotate up to contest. Foul charge to battle. Inbounded the Hall. Hall gets it from Collins. Tries to jump right. Scores. P.J. Right. Hall. Oh, that's nice offense. Just taking his time. Posted up, then turned and faced. They gave him a little space. They've got to get tighter on him. He'll make that shot 9 out of 10. With Ty Strickland on the bench, who will pick up the slack offensively. Strickland has scored the last 11 until then for Temple. So Dunn hits to cut it to a 28-26 game. Somehow they've got to get Caleb Battle involved in the offense. He's averaging 24 a game, and he has not been able to get any clean looks at all. I went up. 
Chief Day! Hemingway. Play with him! Straight up, Collins, Hemingway. Catch and shoot three. The carom grabbed by Dunn. Hemingway to make shots. That was a little deep. Williams lost the grip with the left hand. Saturday, we'll have another giant game in the Big Ten. Number seven, Michigan State takes on number four, Ohio State at the Shoe in Columbus for first place in the Big Ten East. It's a noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific start on ABC and the ESPN app right after college game day on ESPN. Temple doing too much dribbling in the half court. And they're hanging in this game with their really stingy defense. Got to try to work the ball a little bit more in the half court on the offensive end. Honor with the feed to Collins. Collins hops in the lane, hits the front of the rim, gets it back. His follow, no good. Good defense by the Owls down in the paint. Dunn drives. Dunn's left-handed layup is no good. The rebound, the follow, that layup is no good. And now we'll get a whistle here and a stop. Looks like we'll get an infraction here. No check that. And we'll be side out for the Owls. Well, Temple did a good job defensively just building that wall down low without foul. Lobbed into Dunn, and he was held. Hemingway held him. So number one on Hemingway. Now Hemingway gives Clemson some good options on the perimeter, but the last few possessions, Temple's going at him on the defensive end. So Temple, with an opportunity here to tie this game with a two or take the lead with a three as Dunn will sit. Looking to inbound it. And a steal. What a play made there by Hunter Tyson, stealing the inbounds pass. Collins deed up by Hicks. Collins gets it back. Shifting his way in the lane, lost the ball. Two on three, bounce pass to Williams, and Williams gets hit by Tyson on the drive, but that'll send Williams to the line. This is just very good defense. Tyson just stepping in, working it at length, 6'8" causing the turnover. On the other end, David Collins, now, last couple possessions, he's put his head down trying to get to the rim. He's got to, got to do that within the context of the offense. He's still trying to find a comfort level after transferring from USF. I mean, he was very successful at USF as a scorer. That's the type of game he has. You see he's a big, strong guard who has that ability to, you know, kind of knife his way to the rim, but he's got to make sure he does it within the context of their half court. Oh. Second by Williams, missed both. We're only two games into the season on the side of Temple. And it's been a struggle from the free throw line. 54% from the line. Shefflin three is in. Ian Shefflin from deep. Of course set up by Nick Honor. Kind of drove into the gap, drew the defense. Temple got caught ball watching. And Shefflin got his feet set. That's another dimension to Honor's game. He's a team leader in assists with 15 heading in. Williams, and play will go the other way. He missed the three. But a foul picked up by the Owls in the legal screen. Good call by Antonio Petty. And Temple's see the tail end, the left side of the screen, that little push off. He wasn't even on the screen. He's just trying to get himself loose. Emmanuel Okpomo picking up the foul. Five-point edge for Clemson. Shefflin feeds to Honor. Honor trying to find some room against Williams. Pump fake into the lane. Collins, runner good. That's a better 
job by Collins, just being a little bit more patient. He's got that nice floater game. He can get all the way to the rim. He can get to the free throw line. He is a scorer, but he's got to just be a little bit more patient. That time he was. 10-2 run for Clemson. Largest lead of the game for the Tigers at 7. Battle 3, short. Loose ball, Dawes. Not a good look by Battle. A force 3 when they really needed a good shot. Last three minutes for the Owls, no points, three turnovers. Dawes in the paint. Shefflin tries to go right back to it to Collins. And it's out of bounds. A stop on the floor. Clemson with a seven-point lead over the Tem Temple Owls. More after this. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. And Pizza Hut. Order today at PizzaHut.com. Ken, Sean, and Chris, E-Trade Halftime Report is on the way. Coming up much more on the outstanding opener, St. Bonaventure in Boise, plus double overtime in Myrtle Beach, and the sleeper team in the ACC. We got a ton of bucket getters in our game. Yeah, that's the thing that's maybe stood out most to me. I wanted to see how Clemson was going to come out defensively. It's not that they're playing bad defense. Temple's doing a really good job spacing the floor and attacking, while Clemson, they're sharing it. Ten assists on 13 made field goals. Yeah, Nick Honor came out firing like Judge Smales on the back nine <laughs> or in the Caddyshack gift shop. On fire in the first half. Your Honor, Your Honor, back to Derek and Coach. You guys are getting a little giddy up there in Bristol today. <laughs> they might need some coffee. And it's the bad jokes and references, but <laughs> always nice to see our three friends up there, Kevin and company. Chris. <laughs> Shefflin hey. met at the rim and blocked. A rejection there by Jordan. And of course, Sean's there with his UCLA t-shirt underneath his suit. <laughs> Collins can't get it to go, tipped outside and grabbed out by the Owls. All right, Temple's got to slow it down now and get a good shot. Okay, they're hanging in this game despite the last five, six minutes, kind of forcing the issue. Give Clemson's defense a lot of credit, but Temple's got to just run their stuff, move it from side to side, try to get battle open for an easy look. Done. He'll try a three. Can't hit. Tyson rebound. By the way, had a chance to take a look at that bracket for the Myrtle Beach Invitational. Penn losing to Utah State as Shefflin with the drive. Got some contact there. No whistle. Well, he was kind of off balance. He was kind of falling down before he did get bumped. And when you're off balance like that, the officials usually do not give you the call. Done. Missing again. Rebound. Maintained by Collins. Ty Strickland set to check back in for the Owls. And Collins in and a whistle. Remember when Strickland left, he had scored 11 straight for Temple. Williams will head out. Well, the issue, though, has been battle. Just can't get anything going. And it's kind of just floating out on the perimeter, just hoping to get the ball and go one-on-one. -on -one. And you're not going to be able to do that against good defenses. I mean, Clemson's defense is built like a fort. They've got the bigs up front. They're going to pressure the basketball. They're going to help on every pass and every drive. So he's going to have to move without the ball. And they're going to have to help him a little bit by setting some screens to try to free up some space for him off the ball. Collins, one of the key scorers for this Clemson team. It's been the Nick Honor show by and large in this first half, though. With the lead now for Clemson at nine. Largest lead of the game for the Clemson Tigers. Temple, meanwhile, has not scored in nearly five minutes. Strickland. Swings a pass to the wing. Gets it back. Checked by Honor. Down to eight to shoot. Strickland, step back three. Long miss. Dunn tracks it. Battle to the rack. Battle. Went glass, missed it as well. And he blew by his man, but as soon as he got by his man, there was another orange shirt attacking him before he got all the way to the rim. Tyson launches. And connects. 
Connor Tyson. 50% so far this season from three. The lead at 12. 15 to run for the Clemson Tigers. Twelve-point lead for Clemson over Temple. Quarter-final round action. The Shriners Children's Charleston Classic. The Owls trying to find a way to slow down these threes here. Well, this is what Clemson has been doing all afternoon long, and it, it gets you in some false movement away. Then they run a little pick and pop on the perimeter, and Temple's not adjusting, playing that pick and roll. They're doubling the ball and not rotating to the shooter. Three is off from battle. Another Clemson rebound. With Temple laboring from the field. Eight straight misses for Temple. Another forced, quick shot early in the shot clock. Hall, he'll fire. That's off. Shot clock turned off. 12 seconds left. Down to five. Strickland lets it go. The floater catches the top of the backboard. Still half a second left for Clemson to use. Well, Temple right now, they have two offensive players away from the ball in the corner just standing there, and then they're running a double pick and roll in the middle of the court where it's too clogged, and they're not getting any ball or player movement. Clemson ends the half on a 15-2 run. A big part of the success here for Clemson, Nick Honor, 14 points. Coming up, it's the E-Trade Halftime Report. Welcome back to ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. This is the Shriners Children's Charleston Classic. At the half, Clemson leading Temple, 38-26. The winner of this game will take on St. Bonaventure tomorrow at 2.30. Meanwhile, whoever loses this contest will face Boise State earlier in the day. Hello, everybody. Derek Jones and Tim Welch with you, getting you set for second half action. Tim, Clemson has been very good in this contest so far. Nick Honor's been a big part of that. Well, in the NBA, they say it's a make or miss league. And that's who wins the games. In college basketball, it's who gets the best shots. And in the first half, there's no doubt about it. Clemson had the best shots opportunities because they created for themselves. And they had Nick Honor, and you didn't, Temple. He ran the team. He moved without the basketball. He made open shots. He created for other people off the bounce. He played with toughness on both ends of the floor. And then Temple really did not get out on the three-point shooters. They did not defend the pick and roll well. You see, draws all the defense to him, and then they slide into the open gap. And on the pick and pop, if you're going to double the pick and pop, you better get out and contest that pop man with the weak side defender. Temple needs to make some adjustments on how they defend this pick and pop going into the second half, or Clemson's going to run away with this game. Caleb Battle only has two points, but those were scored at the very beginning of the game, and that has kind of also played into Temple's troubling start here offensively. Well, it's been twofold. Cle give Clemson credit on the defensive end. They've done. They have a great game plan. They've locked down Battle. They've given a lot of help when he drove to, drives to the basket because he's a ferocious driver. But also Temple self-inflicted some of the problems. Not running good offense here. Right out of the gate, loose cross-court passes. Clemson takes advantage. Collins for two. And just like that. Clemson strikes again on the defensive side. Even if it's false motion away from the basketball, you have to occupy the defense with some sort of movement. And Temple has one guy with the ball. Everyone else has been just standing around. Same starting five for Temple as the first half. Battle, Williams, Tolbert, 
Forrester as well, and we will go the other way. With a player control foul against the Owls, a push. Okay, the battle got by his man, but as soon as he got by his man, he was making the unselfish play, the driving kick to the corner, but he left the floor and didn't come to a jump stop. Honor, checked by Williams, trying to shake him. Williams left the USC game with a foot injury. Was able to get back into the flow in terms of practice. Tossed in the hall, and that's deflected out of bounds. It will stay with Clemson. Well, the problem Temple has right now is they're chasing Clemson, and Clemson's playing with a lot of confidence, and when you're not scoring, it's very hard defensively to keep up that constant intensity that you're going to need to guard guys like that. Wow. What a drive by Nick Honor. Impressive. At the beginning of this game, Temple was doing a good job showing on screens, not allowing the ball to get deep into the paint. And now they're not rotating. They're standing straight up on defense. Perfect six of six from the field is Honor. Done. Euro. Got it. Well, that was good patience. They changed sides of the floor, and Damian Dunn, that's what he does. He has that ability to have great body control to get all the way to the rim. That is Temple's first field goal since the six-minute mark of the first half. Hall. He'll drive, and he'll score. Took it right at Jake Forrester. Found that angle, the quick step, and the extension to the rim. Dunn trying to create some space. Has to get rid of it. Williams into the lane. And Forrester drops it in. A better job. Last two possessions. Just not trying to play too fast. Shoot too quickly. Waiting to space the floor. Reverse it and then attack in the lane. 14 point lead for the Tigers. Hunter Tyson. The kick out. Honor gets a little space, picks up his dribble. Hall will pull, misses the three. Brad Brownell not happy with that look by Hall. Doesn't want a couple steps out beyond his range. Battle, he can't hit from the right corner. And the rebound taken by Collins. Caleb Battle is a good three point shooter, but under duress. Contested threes. Still stuck on one field goal for the game. Tyson again. He hits from deep. The bigs of Clemson have really stretched out Temple's defense, and the big guys from Temple are not used to going out on the perimeter and guarding dribble handoffs and contesting threes. He's popped a couple of threes so far. The lead at 17, and an errant pass from Williams. Jeremiah Williams is looking to his teammates with his hands up in the air like someone was supposed to be there, but he threw it right to assistant Monte Ross. These are the highs and lows of a young basketball team. The game against USC, they were down 23, rallied back to get it within a possession, but could not finish a job before losing by five. Nearly four minutes in, second half. Tyson stuck, feeds Dawes. Dawes creates space for three and hits. Oh, nice job by Dawes, and Temple is reeling right now because Clemson is working at a high level of execution. 50 to 30 lead for Clemson. Another timeout on the floor by the Temple Owls. An NBA doubleheader this Friday. It all starts at 7.30 p.m. as Jason Tatum and the Boston Celtics play host to Russell Westbrook, AD, and the Los Angeles Lakers. Then at 10 p.m., it's Luka and the Mavericks taking on Devin Booker and Chris Paul at 10 Eastern. You can check it out on ESPN and the app. Well, the Lakers and the Celtics 
neither of them are where we thought they'd be at this point, but LeBron coming back will change things quickly for the Lakers. He's 50-50, according to him. And they need him. Milwaukee just dusted him last night with Giannis. Williams. Going for 40-plus. In the lane, Jordan. We'll get a whistle, and we'll go the other way. The clear out called on the drive by Jordan. Twenty point lead for Clemson. More after this. Wishing nothing but the best for Dick Vitale and Tim. How about what Dick Vitale has meant to obviously ESPN, but to the game of college basketball as a whole? Even beyond that, everybody knows how much he has meant to the game in the Hall of Fame, but having been to his home, having been to his event, Lorraine just raised hundreds of thousands of dollars every year for children's pediatric cancer and see the blood, sweat, tears, everything. I mean, it's just unbelievable. He is just a nonstop ball of energy from the minute you get down to his gala to the minute you leave two days later trying to raise every dollar he can. So all the best to him and Lorraine down in Florida. We know he'll be back soon. Playback underway with Clemson leading it now by 20, 50 to 30, largest lead of the game for the Tigers. The winner plays St. Bonaventure tomorrow. NBA three by Nick Honor. Why not? Why not? And again, Temple went underneath the ball screen. That was a deep, deep three, but you've got to make him put the ball on the floor. You've got to show out hard and take away that three-point shot by Honor. Clemson is shooting a robust 67 from three. Jordan short on the answer. Collins tips it to himself. Collins with a hesitation. The block by Jordan. Good defense. Dunn, his drive will culminate with a pair of free throws as Nas Bohannon. Well, Nick Honor's on fire. So what does that mean? When they set a high ball screen out on the perimeter, you cannot go underneath. And if you're going to switch, you better switch out and make him put the ball on the floor. That's number one on Bohannon. So Damian Dunn at the stripe. It's just been a difficult run, really, for Temple since Ty Strickland originally left the game. He had scored 11 straight points. And Temple had gone back and forth. They had a lead of four at one point in this game. But the momentum has slipped away from them as the first half wore on. And the threes continue to pour in from Clemson. You know, and Temple came into this game. They showed a lot of energy early after the slow start they had against USC where they were got buried early and fought all the way back. But this game, they just the defense of Clemson frustrated them. And Aaron McKee's trying to switch it up. They're going to go three-quarter court pressure to try to change up the tempo of this game. But without battle... Being able to score, it's going to be hard for Temple to get back in this game. Sixth all-time matchup between these two programs. Straight-on jumper hits from Chase Hunter. Time Temple showed zone, and but it was soft on the perimeter. Hunter went into his shot. Jordan wasn't close enough. Williams trying to cross over Tyson. Down to seven to shoot. Dunn splits the defense. And he got fouled on the split. Chase Hunter will pick up the whistle for the Tigers. The substitutions for Temple. Hicks and Battle back in. That's number two. Temple's still trying to find themselves, Derek. There's, you can see the talent. They will grow into being... A winning team, there's no doubt about it, because they've got some good players. 
We all know Battle can score. I like Dunn. He's tough. He can get to the rim. And Strickland has shown tonight that he can really score. He's got it here. Baseline drive. Underneath the rim, the layup by Tolbert, no good. The kick out, back outside with one to shoot. Strickland lets it go and puts it in. He's somebody that can really light it up. He's playing with a lot of confidence today. Got that quick release and a tremendous presence of mind to know where the shot clock was. The Strickland bucket gives him a tie for his career high in scoring. He's got 14. Hunter. Again, Chase Hunter showed the mid-range game earlier. Now the runner to push the lead out to 22. Well, a nice bench player for Clemson. Gives him some nice depth off the bench, playing with some good confidence offensively within the rhythm of the offense. Just under 13 minutes left to go. Into Jordan, who puts it in off the window. Nice job by Jordan, and better offense by Temple. They found a little space in the middle of the floor. Did a good job of rolling to the rim under control. Honor checked by Strickland. Bohannon turns and lays it in. Nas Bohannon, the Ohio native, expanding the lead to 22. But that's the thing with Clemson's depth. They bring in some guys that can make plays off the bench. And Bohannon, a shooter from the outside, they pressured him. He just put it on the floor, got all the way to the rim. Great defense by Honor, but Strickland takes advantage of the ball falling right back to him to stick it in, but Honor, they've gotten caught there while trying to defend Strickland. That man is rock tough. He's in some pain. That knee in the midsection. And he just popped up and ran to the bench. Sure. Yeah, he, he could see right there. Falling to the floor. You can see the reaction on his face after he took the knee to the gut. Dawes. Post extended for Bohannon. Ooh, Hunter was open for a moment, but that pass a little behind him. Able to scurry back to get it. Five to shoot for Dawes. Dawes, he'll launch. Rims out. Loose ball, and that will give the basketball back to Temple as Hunter was out of bounds. 20-point lead for Clemson. More from Charleston in a moment. A look at Aaron McKee's career. Played at Temple, was the A-10 player of the year in 92-93. Got to the NBA, played for four teams there, having a distinguished career. And now the head coach of Temple University Basketball. Of course, a great run as a player, leading the Owls to the Elite Eight in 93. And now, Tim, trying to get something going here with the Owls program as a coach. Now he made it, and he did it his way. He came from the ground up and made himself a player and talks about life and you know, how tough life can be. And he daily teachings to his team and they need to listen to that guy because he was a player and he's a great person and he's gonna be a mentor to these kids and being coached by John Cheney and Larry Brown and company at the NBA and then working for Fran Dunphy I can't think of a better group of guys to be around to learn the game from no doubt it was on the 2001 Sixers team that made the NBA finals that was coached by Larry Brown DJ Hall with the finish. Well, Clemson's a well-oiled machine this afternoon. They're moving the ball, they're spacing the court, and they're making the extra pass. It's a big and fast team, but as you hit on, they execute very well. Strickland's drive contested by Hall. He snatches the ball out of the air. Bohannon, wheeling and dealing. Finds Collins, hangs in the air, can't score, but two free throws coming for David Collins. Well, again, the extra pass, Nas Bohannon 
Drove in with his head up. He waited, waited, waited for the defense just to bite a little bit and then found Collins cutting to the rim. So Collins is the seventh leading scorer all time in South Florida. He's a transfer from South Florida. Over 1,500 points scored as he gets the first to trickle in. And certainly that's a big storyline throughout college basketball this season, transfers. What do you make of that situation as it evolves? Well, obviously the players needed more rights, and they were granted those, so it is what it is. I mean, it's not the best situation for coaches, and it's not always the best situation for players because you're jumping around at the first opportunity. I mean, if you have good guidance and understanding of where you can fit in, then yes, it's good. But we've seen some issues already where kids go somewhere and they get less playing time and, are, and aren't as happy as where they were. Dunn hangs in the air. He misses. Loose ball. Out to Hunter. To the block. Hall cuts in. Hall hook shot off balance. And it draws air. White and a steal. Hunter stepped right into the lane and missed the dunk. Right idea, just wrong execution. He just took off a little too soon. White can't hit the three. Bohannon slaps the ball together with two hands. Bohannon, I like him. He, he just plays like a cornerback out there. He's going after every loose ball. He sticks his nose right on it. 6'6", six, six, over 230. When he's out there on the floor, you know it. Hall facing up. Jumper spins out. Bohannon flies into the lane to get the loose ball, and that leads to a foul. Well, remember, he's just trying to fit in, too. He's just he's new to the team. He comes from Youngstown State. He's coming out of the portal, so you better put a body or two on this guy. Here he comes from the three-point line. Temple watches, and this guy acts. Number two on White. McKee gets back to the hotel tonight. That would be a play I would show my team. This, you're getting outworked by this one guy. Three of your uh, Temple's players are watching. He's just attacking. The Hunter miss leads to a Tolbert rebound with nine minutes left to go. Clemson in command, 62-39. Williams at the elbow, the kick out to White. He almost carried that. And White tumbles to the floor. foul will be charged to Chase Hunter. That's number three on Hunter. We'll see Shefflin in. Tyson back in as well. We saw in our last break heading in, Nick Honor was doubled over near the Clemson bench. He's still on the bench. He appears to be okay, but we'll see if he comes back into the game. Tolbert working the kick out. White three. No good. Uh, you got a 23 point lead with eight minutes to go. You're controlling both ends of the floor. You got your floor general who's just played his heart out, and you got three games in four days. It's a smart move by Brad Brunell just to keep him out. Shefflin. Over to Dawes. Near steal there by Dunn. And you have potentially a game tomorrow that you're going to have to have all your weapons because St. Bonaventure is real good. That will be a very interesting crowd dynamic tomorrow with Clemson playing in their own state, basically. But influence of St. Bonaventure's crowd, they will make their presence felt tomorrow and further in this tournament. No one knows Bonnie's fans as I do. And after they watch their team today, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of them are heading to the Buffalo Airport right now to come back down here and add to the crowds for tomorrow. And 
impressive performance down the stretch. Six-point win for St. Bonaventure earlier in game one. Dawes, three to shoot. Into Shefflin, and that's going to be a violation. Could not get it off in time. Seven minutes and 38 seconds remaining from Charleston, South Carolina. Clemson in the lead. The Shriners Children's Charleston Classic continuing on tonight. However, the winner of this game will take on St. Bonaventure tomorrow at 2.30. Meanwhile, in action earlier in the day tomorrow, Boise State will play whoever loses in this contest between Clemson and Temple. As we take a look at our game track brought to you by Dollar General. 14-0 run put together by Clemson to help establish this lead of 23. White at point blank range can't finish. And it's off to Clemson. And again, Clemson's defense. Caleb Battle, Battle beat his defender off the bounce, but here comes a second and then a third defender after Battle. That's what happens when you have one assist in your first two games. They're gonna send two and sometimes three defenders. He's gotta be able to play with his head up and make the next play a pass to an open man. You also saw there Nick Honor with 19 points to lead scorers in this contest. Tyson has the ball go off his hand. A steal for the Owls. Strictly. Right-handed drive, shot wild. Back over to Clemson. Clemson shot 53% in the first half. They've basically been in step with that in half two. Meanwhile, Temple shooting 35% in this second half out of that last media timeout. And very rarely as Temple looks at the rim. That's a great point. So much of their work offensively has been contested. Dawes, he drives. Scoop layup misses. Strickland at the controls. Well, Clemson last few possessions getting a little out of sorts from what got him here. Battle. Tough follow and he gets it to go. So Battle with a rare field goal. That's just his second field goal of the game. Uh, it was one of the first opportunities he's had to dribble drive right from the three-point line to get to the rim without any help. Hunter Tyson to the rack. Well, Clemson used the pick and pop to its advantage in the first half with their bigs being able to step out and shoot threes. That time, it was the pick and slip to the rim. Battle cutting towards the rim. Ball out of bounds on the air pass. Clemson ball. Yeah, great job again. Just Temple not defending the pick and roll at the top properly and on the backside, no help at the rim. We've talked about the stars here for Clemson, but Hunter Tyson has played a nice game here today. He has. He's he's hard to guard. Temple's, uh, excuse me, Clemson's bigs are hard to guard, especially Tyson and Hall. Do a great job of moving without the ball. They're good passers, and they can make open shots from the outside. Collins dealing with battle. Ten to shoot. Collins, two defenders at him. Ball gets stripped. Uh, kind of Collins just drove himself into trouble. That was a self-inflicted problem. Too, too tight at the rim. Dunn over Tyson for the jumper. Under five minutes left to go. Clemson out in front by 21. Nick Honor back in. Shefflin, hook shot, right hand, score it. Uh, Brad Brown <laughs> was barking at his team over the sideline. Last three possessions, kind of sloppy with the basketball, taking contested shots, not in rhythm that time. They he demanded they run a set, and they did. In there, Chase. In there. In there. And Hicks trying to get something going there leads to a whistle. Temple just trying to find their way here in the second half. They just haven't been able to put together any kind of offensive run. 
They've been met with plenty of resistance, just like that. Honor, ahead to Tyson. Tyson misses the rim with the layup. And a tie-up. Possession arrow goes in favor of Clemson. Good hustle there by David Collins. Well, you can beat or play with teams if you have good athletes and play one-on-one -on -one basketball or space the court and just try to beat them with your athleticism. But against a good, solid team defense like Clemson, you have to run stuff. You have to make them work. You can't just take the first opportunity and shoot the basketball or not run anything to get your shots. Shefflin looking, kicks out to Honor. Hunter, down to two, needs to shoot. Missed the shot, offensive rebound by Collins. New possession for the Tigers. And Collins just outworked battle for that rebound. Hunter, out to Tyson. Tyson to the rack. Yeah, that's just inexcusable, though. You've got Hunter Tyson at 6'8", just on the blow by Damian Dunn. Not in a stance, just let him go to a strong hand, beat him, and then no help. Battle loses a handle, but a whistle gives us a stop. 68-43, Clemson lead. More in a moment. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Dollar General, where you save time and money every day. And Popeye's New Nuggets. They come in peace. Eight peace. Clemson up by 25. Derek Jones and Tim Welsh with you as we get a look at the ACC media preseason poll. Clemson in the mix with a very, very tough conference. You know, Clemson a year ago was, was very solid and obviously got into the NCAA tournament. North Carolina, Duke were having off years. I don't think North Carolina and Duke are going to have off years, but you can see this team can play with anybody. So far, the ACC, though, Florida State lost to, to Florida. Virginia's lost two games at already, including one at home to Navy. Uh, Louisville lost to Furman at home. So the ACC's tough. It's good. But I think Clemson will be in the mix again. Off the miss. Tolbert, three-point play opportunity. North Carolina was actually in this very building a couple of nights ago playing against the College of Charleston. Getting a win. They found a way to win the other night. Their defense was not very good. I'm sure that's a work in progress for Hubert Davis trying to establish what he wants to do defensively. But they found a way to win on the road in a hostile environment, which was impressive. And the three-point play finished off. They cut it to a 22-point lead. Honor. Over to Bohannon. He puts it on the floor. Hunter hanging in the air. Couldn't get the layup to drop. But another rebound for the Tigers. Under three minutes left to go. Under five seconds to shoot. Honor slips on the floor. Hemingway with the three. That is no good. White with a rebound. Well, mission accomplished, though, for Clemson. They didn't get a good shot, but they used up a lot of clock. I think that's what Brad Brownell wants to do at this point. Just get this win and get out of here without anybody getting banged up. His honor was out for a while, but now he's back in. Ben Middlebrooks with the rebound. He's into the game for the first time. The freshman out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Middlebrooks. Hemingway three is good, plus the foul. Four-point play opportunity on the way for Hemingway. Well, Alex Hemingway, we you know he can shoot because he's from Indiana. He grew up shooting these shots when he was about three years old. And he's got the quick release. He doesn't need much time. He spaces the court. He knows where he's supposed to be. Just stand in the corner, and if they overhelp, he's ready to bang it in. 
What a day for Clemson shooting from the outside. The guys from Indiana, they grew up, they watched Steve Alford their whole life. <laughs> Playing for Indiana, and they do one thing, they shoot it. Contagious. He can't finish off the, the four-point play, but again, another offensive rebound. Hunter. Chase Hunter, nicely done. And I like Chase Hunter a lot as well, and Brad Brownell really has to be very pleased with his bench play today and the depth that he's developing here early in the season. Tolbert in to throw it down. We'll get a stop here. And while we have a moment, let's take a look at what's going on elsewhere in South Carolina with the Myrtle Beach Invitational. New Mexico State getting the win to advance to the semifinals. They'll take on Utah State, who had to go through two overtimes with Penn. It's been a rough day for the big five teams in Philadelphia, with Penn losing, and now Temple on the way to a loss. Justin Bean for Utah State today, 33-16. and 16. That's a name we'll hear a lot of this year. Devin Foster with the basketball in for the first time as well. Bohannon powers his way down low and throws up the hook with the left hand. There's not much you can do about that. Naz Bohannon, Chase Hunter, Alex Hemingway, Ian Shefflin, Middlebrooks. These guys are all part of the rotation for Clemson, and they'll give Brad Brunell a lot of different looks he can present. Let's take a look at our player of the game brought to you by Shriners Children's Nick Honor. Had 14 points in the first half, 19 for the game. Perfect day from the field for Honor. Let's say some of those Clemson fans, they can get in their car tomorrow morning, come down here because this is going to be a, a very good college basketball game between Clemson and St. Bonaventure. White will try a three. That's no good. Jordan with the rebound to keep it alive. Hicks will try it. That's no good. And a rebound taken by Parker Fox. 14 seconds left. It was close early. And then Clemson applied a knockout blow. They will advance to the semifinals with a 75-48 win against Temple. It will be Clemson versus St. Bonaventure tomorrow afternoon. Nick Honor with the huge performance, 19 points, 7 of 7 shooting from the field, including 4 for 4 from downtown. Well, Nick Honor set the tone early on both ends of the floor, and but Clemson, it was a total team effort. We have a great point guard that is unselfish and plays with toughness. Sometimes that rolls right through the rest of the team and Clemson today defensively just locked down Temple and on offense highly efficient. A tremendous performance by Clemson. This was a close competitive game early on but Clemson too much offense and defense for the Temple Owls. And now let's welcome in the head coach of the Clemson Tigers, Brad Brownell. Congratulations on the win, coach. How about the effort of your team today? Yeah, I thought we played really well. Um, Temple fought hard early and made some shots. I uh, didn't think we guarded quite as well in the first 12 minutes, but really the last, you know, 28, I thought we played about as well as we could play. We really had a nice mix to our game, had a little bit of inside, got a little bit of driving. A little bit of transition, made some threes. i just really pleased with the way we played, played well. well. With all your new guys that are kind of fitting in and changing into different roles this year, how important is it that Nick Honor is out there running the team and giving everyone else confidence? You know, he's, he's just a really solid, good player. He's one of those guys you love as a coach because he takes care of the ball. He knows what you're doing. He's got enough burst that he can go make a play for himself or somebody else. And he's playing with a lot of confidence. And, uh, you know, he accepts his role. He's a guy that could probably score more sometimes. Today he scored a lot. Had other games where he's just assisted. Um, he's just been a really good team player. Seemed like your team really locked in defensively, especially as that first half wore on. How about the defensive performance of your club? Well, I thought we did a great job on battle. I think he's an elite level scorer at all three levels. And we really, that was the plan, was to try to do as much as we could to, to make it hard for him and see what other guys could do. 
Uh, Strickland played well, made some tough shots early in the game, and, and then we needed to try to keep them off the glass. They're a good rebounding team, and I thought our guys did a pretty good job for that. I thought on offense, Brad, you had a great balance of not only Nick making shots and creating shots for other people, but the pick and pops, the pick and slips. How important is it for your bigs to keep you giving you that type of production? Yeah, they're good. Our, our bigs are versatile. They can move. We try to move them all over the court with the way we play. Uh, and I think, you know, what that does is it, it, it makes it a little more challenging for a game plan of how you're going to stop them. And uh, we got a lot of different things we do, and, and I thought our guys, you know, we're getting better that way. Coach, thank you very much for your time. Okay. Good luck to you tomorrow against St. Bonaventure. Thanks. That's going to be a tough one. Those guys are good. Clemson wins it by the score of 75 to 48. They'll take on St. Bonaventure tomorrow. Marquette and Ole Miss on the way at 7 o'clock from right here in Charleston, South Carolina. Once again, our final score is Clemson 75, Temple 48. For Tim Welsh and our entire crew, I'm Derek Jones. Thanks for joining us here in Charleston. Stay tuned. More action coming up at the top of the hour. Have a good one, everybody.